on behalf of Rafiki and Timon, we wish you all a day filled with adventure here at Disney's Animal Kingdom. some of the animals that we might get to see out here today. Now, based on their migration patterns and times of day they're most active, we may not see every single animal that's up there on the guide, but we do usually have them. Ooh, actually, as we come up around this next corner back on our right-hand side, these look like some greater kudu coming up. Oh, and some bongo. The greater kudu are gonna be the ones with the lighter tan fur, and the bongo have that darker brown, almost rust-colored fur. We're gonna be real careful here because that one's real close to the road on the left. Now the greater kudu that we're seeing are all going to be female, and we can tell because only the males of that species grow horns. All, all the bongos, the males and the females grow horns, but you'll notice that their horns grow back away from their heads, which allow them to run through the brush quickly and quietly without having to worry about getting tangled on any of the branches that are underneath. With their brown fur and white markings down their sides, both species can also help mimic the appearance of sunlight coming through the trees during the day, earning them the nickname the ghosts of the forest over the years. a really great look at these giraffes along the way as well. I did mention the adult giraffes are the tallest animal in the world, but even a baby giraffe is still pretty large by our standards. A baby giraffe is actually born at about six feet tall and will weigh about 150 pounds at birth. Even though they are that big, a big giraffe will give birth standing up, so the first thing the babies experience is about a six foot drop to the ground. And things don't really get a whole lot easier for them after that either, because they are then expected to learn to stand, walk, and run in about the first hour after they've been born. It does look like a couple of antelope species up ahead. The really small tan ones over here on our right are going to be the spring bop. They only get to be about three feet tall, making them one of the smallest species of antelope. Despite their height though, they can jump six feet in the air from a standing position or leap 13 feet forward when they've got a running start. Kind of on the other end of that spectrum, the larger tan antelope that are over here with them are the Patterson's eland. And they're gonna be one of the largest species of antelope. They get to be about six feet tall. Oh, and actually there are some sable antelope back there by the bushes as well with that darker brown fur. Now the sable antelope do tend to be one of the species that are going to be a bit more brave. Uh, it might be a little tricky to see from here, but you can kind of tell that their horns grow long, thin, and pointed back away from their heads. That makes those horns a great defense mechanism that will deter predators from jumping onto their backs. And last but certainly not least, there is a herd of white bearded wildebeest over there as well. Looks like a pretty small herd compared to what it could be though. During their migration season, they can travel, they can have as many as 1.5 million members in their herd. That's already pretty impressive on its own, but during that time, they'll also travel between 500 and 1,000 miles together as well. Now we're gonna keep going down this road a little farther up ahead here. That's a pretty big tree that's been knocked down. That is usually a great sign of elephant activity in an area for us. We can usually tell when elephants are on the move through the reserve when we see trees like this one knocked down because the elephants don't always have the same height advantage to the giraffes since they really only get to be about 14 feet tall. But what they do have on their side instead is their strength and they are plenty strong enough to bulldoze the trees down if we, they need to. Elephants like this one do need to rely on a lot of their resources when they eat because they need to eat around three to 500 pounds worth of food in a day and also drink around 50 gallons worth of water. 
And we're gonna come around this next corner real careful here because there are some white rhino grazing in this clearing. And they're probably the ones responsible for making that mud bowl that's also over here because they are another animal that will use the mud to help cool down and protect their skin. The white rhino will be the larger of the two African species of rhino. They're gonna be about four to 5,000 pounds fully grown. Despite their size, they can still charge at a pretty impressive 35 miles an hour. But luckily for us, they're pretty social and can usually be found in groups like what we're seeing here. And that could mean there's some more in this area that we'll need to be on the lookout for as well as so we move a little farther east through the reserve. Now we are starting to get pretty close to predator territory here, but that really wouldn't bother any of the rhinos too much because unfortunately their only predator out in the wild is still going to be the human. And they're still common targets for poaching because of their horns. But their horns also aren't made out of ivory like elephant tusks are. They're made out of keratin, which is the same material our hair and fingernails are made out of. So we're not quite sure why people do still seem to want them so badly. And we are definitely in predator territory now. There's a cheetah laying down over there in the grass. The cheetahs are one of the only big cat species that will be active and do their hunting during the day. And they've got a couple of advantages that help with that. They've got black markings under their eyes to help absorb and reflect the sunlight while they hunt, just like when we wear sunglasses during the day. They're also the fastest land animal in the world, reaching running speeds of up to 60 miles an hour. Now they can reach that speed in about three seconds, but it's also more of a sprint for them, so they can really only maintain it for a couple hundred yards or so. Another one over there too. Now one of the reasons the cheetahs can run so fast is that they do have non-retractable claws. So their claws are out all the time, giving them a great source of traction for those runs. And when they're at their top speed, they can use their tails like rudders to steer with because their tails are made completely out of muscle. Now, usually Kopi rocks like this one are another really great spot to see some of the bigger cat species hanging out. I think I might see a lion head just around this corner here. Now, just like the cheetahs have advantages to hunting during the day, lions have advantages to hunting at night. So even though the kopi does give them a really great view of the savannah, they're gonna spend most of their day at rest, conserving their energy for their hunts. During the daytime, a lion's eyesight is about the same as yours or mine, but at night it will be about six times more powerful. When they do go on their hunts, the hunting is primarily handled by the females of the pride. The male will stay behind to defend the territory and any cubs. They can get pretty far away from another if they want another if they need to. A lion's roar can be heard from about five miles away, giving them one of the most powerful roars out of any of the bigger cat species.